hey, there's been lots of news and tools released in the 3D AI animation space, including ways to model, rig, and animate a quadruped, whether it's a mouse, a cat, or a dragon. I'll quickly show the process of bringing that 3D animation into Adobe After Effects to make a scene like this. Plus, for a bit of fun, I'll quickly show how you can use Domo AI to restyle the video. All right, on with the video. First up, we have Meshi, which now supports quadruped animation to apply to your quadruped characters. I'll include a link to Meshi in the video description below. So here I've just used this simple text prompt, generated a few iterations of this dragon, and then refined one of them. And I can then go up to animation, and we have our new quadruped button here. So I can click that. Use this reference image here to align the various points on our model. And we get our rigged animated mesh. And whilst it's not perfect, remember this is just version one. It's only going to get better. Plus, you can try it with other meshes and refine the points of those joints and download a file to take into your 3D package. If you are interested in using Meshi, I published this video just over a week ago where I explored their new Meshi 3 Turbo model, plus showed how you could make a character, texture it, retexture it, plus apply a character rig and animate it directly within Meshi before taking it into your preferred 3D package to make a wider scene. And I've gone through the same process shown in that video with my dragon mesh here, repeating that walk cycle, and then I'm saving out a GLB file to take into Adobe After Effects. So hopping into Adobe After Effects, I've got this piece of footage that I filmed out of a window looking down at a street where we can add our 3D dragon walking down the scene. I can click on this footage, go to Window Tracker if it's not already enabled, which brings up this window here, and I can press Track Camera. You can then draw around some of the points, making sure you have at least three selected and then right click, and press create solid and camera. And this will create a solid and a camera. Now in my footage here, it looks like the angle is slightly off for our solid layer. So I'm just gonna press R so I can rotate this layer, get it roughly where I want it, drag out the area that we're gonna have our dragon walking along. And this is gonna provide us a shadow plane to catch the shadows cast by our 3D model. And I've quickly eyeballed that just to fix the rotation because I don't want to spend too long perfecting that camera tracking. I can then bring down the GLB dragon file exported from Blender, drop that into the scene. Press P to bring up the position variable. The same on that solid layer. Copy the position from the solid, paste it onto our dragon. And then with the dragon layer selected, I can press A twice and select our animation. So now when I spin through, we have our walking dragon. And I can rotate him in the scene. Press S to bring up scale. Press P for position again, turn on that stopwatch button. And I've set some keyframes for the start position and end of position of our dragon. And we can spin through to check we're happy with that. And then we can add a HDR environment light. As I don't currently have a 360 camera that can shoot HDR images, I use this iPhone app called HDRI. Stood out, slightly embarrassed in the high street, taking multiple photos to create a full 360 image of the scene. And whilst it's not perfect, it's good enough for our use today and you're able to use the app for free three times, and it lets you download an EXR file, which I've opened up in Adobe Photoshop here, and resave it as a HDR image by choosing the Radiance format. And then with that EXR image in After Effects, I can drop it onto the timeline, hide it, and I can then right click, press New, choose Light, select the Environment Light, press OK, and then go to Advanced 3D, choose Render Options, Press Fit to Scene and it will update the shadow box so it covers the size of your floor plane that we've laid out as well as our 3D model. And press OK. And we now have our dragon lit with that shadow being cast on the floor. And if we go down to the source settings of our light, we can change from default to that HDR image. And we can open up the transform properties and rotate the light so the shadows match those in our scene. And I can go down to our track solid layer, drop that down, go down to material options, and on the Accept Shadows layer, just choose Accept Shadows only. So it only renders the shadows being cast on that layer. Then as we play through, you'll see we have our dragon and those shadows on the floor. And again, this is not perfect. There's some things wrong with that walk cycle, things wrong with the mesh, and the shadows are not ideal. But this is just giving you a quick oversight on the process that you might go through and you can think how to advance it going further. For a bit of a test, I wanted to try applying an AI image style to the video clip of the dragon walking down the street. So I could have used Comfy UI and used an elaborate workflow which would apply an image reference. But for ease, I've hopped over to Domo AI and using one of their video to video models, drop down the image style and choose Fusion Style version two. I'm gonna add a quick text prompt. Game of Thrones dragon walking down high street, cinematic filmic, walking down modern British residential area. And I can add a reference image. And I've got one here that I actually generated in the past using Mid Journey. Check the other settings and press generate. Since I'm here and have a few credits available, I'm gonna try out a few other options as well. Let's go for anime version six. 
Illustration version 1.2, which is a 3D cartoon style. And one more just for fun, I'm going to try the one down here, Illustration version 12, which is a toy brick style, which looks strangely like Lego. And here are the results. There's various cool elements to each of these, um, various bits where they get confused in that classic uh, AI stable diffusion kind of way. But um, yeah, some potential, particularly like the one in the bottom left using that style reference. Now I could have upscaled these within Domo AI and then taken them into Topaz Video AI to further enhance them, add some fidelity, reduce some of that flicker, but I'm not that fussed about it today. It was just a bit of a fun test. And I suspect in the future we'll be able to do an even better version of this process. All right, so that brings me to the end of today's video, exploring some of the latest 3D AI tools. Um, if you haven't already, please do press subscribe and like, and please leave any comments below if you've seen any cool tools, you've appreciated this video, anything like that. All right. Have an awesome day. Thanks very much. Cheers.